All right, so I have all my teeth now. I've got my upper teeth and my lower teeth. So there's only one more uh, macro structure that we need to do, and that's the uh, and that's the proboscis that's going to be coming out of it. And for that, we're going to be mainly relying on this uh, chameleon tongue as our reference, with a little bit of this this wasp stinger at the end of it. So I'm going to try and mimic this kind of a shape, even though I know that this bend is mainly just being caused by gravity and not the actual shape of the tongue. I think it's still pretty interesting, so that's the kind of form we're going to try and mimic here. And then, yeah, we'll top it off with this right here. So I'll make another layer. I'll increase the voxel resolution a bit, and I'll call this one proboscis body. And there's a couple ways we can do this. I'm just going to do it with curves. And so once again, I'm going to clear all those curves. Turn. Make sure you turn off transform curve because otherwise um, you won't be able to draw your curves normally. So I'm going to start out here at the very end. And then looking at it from the side, let's see, how long should this be? It would probably go up to the length of the body. So how long is that, though? Well, believe it or not, 3D Code actually provides a tool for this. It's called the Measure tool in your Adjustments tab. So if I go on Measure, and I just click and drag, so it'd probably go back about that far into the body. So we're looking at about 207 millimeters. So now that I know that, I can measure out 200 millimeters out from the body, and that's about how long I want this to be. So I'll click, and about 200 and close enough. All right, so that is about how long we want it to be, maybe a little bit longer. So I'll go back to my Curves tool. And if I just quickly see, so it's about right there. Go back to Curves, I'll click out about that far. Hmm, looks like he's smoking a giant uh, cigarette right there. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, about that long. And now I'm not quite done with this. I'm going to hide the main body for a second here. And I don't want this to just be a straight tube. I actually want it to be narrower in the middle than it is uh, in than it is at the ends. So I'll make these a bit narrower so the whole thing isn't quite as thick. And then keeping in mind this right here. I'm going to cut it off about there, grab this point, move this one down a little bit, and then you see how this isn't really a sharp angle, it's just a smooth curve, hence the name. If you right click on any one of these points, it'll become a sharp corner. And I'll grab this and I'll just make that a bit narrower, and then I'll click here. And I'll grab that one, I'll make that narrower as well, move it a bit closer. That way we'll get a very visible uh, joint right there at the end. And probably make this a little bit narrower too. Okay, hit enter. Excellent, it's, that's coming along pretty nicely. So I'm going to add a little something right here. Okay. And now I'm going to make the proboscis point. And that's going to be this stinger that we have here. 
And the reason why I'm going to let this um, extend further out than what should be uh, capable for this body is that this is actually going to fold in on the, uh, the curve here. So the ends here are going to be pretty flat. That can be a little tricky to do. One trick that you can use with the move tool is that if you hold down control, it'll actually push the, uh, the material in based off of the direction it's facing rather than your viewing angle. Like you see, if I wanted to bring this particular part of the mesh out to the side, I would need to grab it from the top using the traditional move method. But if I hold down control and drag, then you see it actually pushes away from whatever direction the surface is facing. So this is actually really good for getting this to be, um, to be flat on the sides. And then to kind of make it match up with the uh, with the joint that we already drew, grab my move tool, and that fold will actually sort of help it look like this is part of a skinned joint. And then another thing I'm going to do, and this is sort of important for you to take into consideration when you're doing your models, is I'm also going to take into consideration the angle at which I ultimately export this at. Because what this is going to do, what this piece is going to do, is that if I bring the pivot point to where it should be, which is right around here, this is going to fold in on itself like this while it's shooting out, and then unfold to be straight. So what I want to do is I actually want to model it about halfway, maybe a little bit of bias towards the straightened side. I want to model it about halfway through that transition because what that will do is that'll minimize the uh, deformation I need to do to it while I uh, rig it. Because if I if I export it like this then when I fold it to its closed position then this joint is going to look very heavily deformed and vice versa if I export it in the closed position. So I'm going to export it kind of halfway in between and split the difference. And with that, just about all the macro structures of this creature are finished. So we can start moving on to the, uh, the detail pass.